Hey everyone, this is Ursinus, and welcome back to our epilogue of our Timurid playthrough. Um, I like to do these analyses kind of just for myself, for my own information, especially uh, for you all, just to see kind of how how the game pro progressed, what our trajectory was kind of from, from day one, and we'll see when we got strong, when we got weak, and kind of learn uh, how we played. So we did win a domination victory. Here we go, this is our win screen. The world has been convulsed by war, many great and powerful civs have fallen, but you have survived! And emerged victorious, the world will long remember your glorious triumph. Indeed it will. Uh, the demographic screen, we can take a look at this, and wow, by the end of it, and with domination victories, this is not uncommon. Um, because we were kind of taking everyone's stuff, uh, we, we were number one in pretty much everything. We had the most people uh, in our cities as population, we had the most food production, we have the most production, so hammers, we have the most money uh, production, and... I think there's also a rating per turn or something like that. Something ridiculous like that. Uh, largest land area, land mass. Number one in the military, unsurprisingly. We ha we're actually the happiest empire on the map. We do have 100% approval. And we have finished 88% of the tech tree. So that's pretty darn good. Uh, we, we are Caesar, uh, apparently. Because we, we, we did really good. Uh, apparently, no matter what you do, you're better than Dan Quayle. So, <laughs> little... Little political commentary much? Yeah, anyway. So we are Caesar, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then lastly, the replay screen, this is where most of the analysis can be found. The messages aren't that useful, they kind of have just a, a laundry list of everything that kind of happens. And uh, this is not great, not exciting, but we did play for 14 hours of game time, after which we did a domination victory. 14 hours, zero minutes, nice round number. But the graphs on the map are really what I want to talk about. And the score isn't particularly indicative because score isn't really indicative of much. You can kind of win from a lower score with diplomacy or something to that effect. But the, the, the graphs I like to look at are science per turn and also, uh, where is it? Uh, I think technologies, absolute technology. I might want to just skip the darn thing. Where is it? Uh, number of known techs. Here we go. So, looking at the number of known techs, we started off slow, obviously, because the AI does begin with free techs uh, at Immortal, and even more so on Deity. Uh, but we caught up right around, hmm, right around almost the turn of the clock, right around 0 AD, more or less. So, at that point, we were catching up, and the Shoshone were actually pretty far, the Inca were pretty good. And then the Inca kind of really, the Inca were the tech leader for a while, which is not surprising. They were to the new eras first. Uh, and the Shoshone were kind of up there too. So when we did take them out, we were actually, you know, fighting the strongest people there. And after that, it kind of all went downhill and we were running away with it. Um, but this, you know, this is basically at the time we got our libraries that we had our national college up. We had everything rolling along the way we wanted it. And then, you know, we kept up our advantage with universities and public schools and research labs and all that. And we just kind of went. So that's really good. Uh, the other thing we want to look at is kind of beakers per turn, uh, science per turn. Again, we were doing pretty good early on. And then we started taking off. And this just went boom. This is when we, this is the time when we, uh, we enacted that policy to have a free factory in the capital. Beakers went down and then suddenly bam, bam, bam. And we just kind of took off from there. And this is, this is why you want to make sure your beakers per turn stay high. As far as absolute science goes, though, uh, that's also an interesting, interesting measure. Uh, if I could find the darn thing now. Oh, I'm having so much trouble these times of actually finding what I want to show you. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I guess we'll have to put away for that for now. But uh, either way, like I said, we had, we, had a lot of, uh, we had a lot of science. We kept that up. We kept that advantage. We caught up, and then after that, it went haywire. Now, the military might... This is pretty interesting, because when we were conquering early, we actually weren't the strongest military in the game, not by a long shot. We were concentrating our forces at uh, points points of most import, uh, basically their capitals, as we were taking them one by one. And then once we had our techs up, we just went absolutely ballistic once we started bulbing. This is all the science bulbing we did with our uh, great scientists, and then nothing could have stopped us then. So yeah. So really neat to look at that, and the fun part is, is the map. The map is great because you can kind of play the game through per turn and see how we developed. Um, and so to narrate, right, we settled our first city. We start, everyone started settling. Everyone's going to be dropping right about the same time. Japan expanded early. The Huns expanded early. We blocked off Attila, uh, Attila Montezuma from settling. 
and this is still remember the early episodes, we decided to go for the Great Barrier Reef City. In the interim, obviously, Pocatello is taking a massive amount of real estate. This is the part where we got our national college. We're waiting to drop our fourth city, and sure enough, there we drop it. We also drop our fifth because we wanted to have this iron here for frigates, which we ultimately ended up not using too much, but, you know, it was good to have. And this is the point where we decided to build up a military and go after Tenochtitlan, uh, the Aztec capital, and shortly you will see it fall. About turn 160, there we go, boom. So we got it, and this is when Attil, uh, Montezuma's empire just gets taken apart by everyone after we take his capital. We basically precipitated his downfall. Uh, after that, we started getting artillery, plotted the, the breakdown and the downfall of the Shoshone capital, Mosinkani, and we took that with our artillery rather readily. Uh, and again, we got this in a peace deal, and then Attila promptly declared war on us, much to our chagrin. So we dealt with him. We burned down that little silly Attila city. Uh, Japan got one of his cities, so that was kind of funny. And then this was pretty much this giant military buildup. We took off the Incas, we took off the Japanese, and then we took <laughs> the Viennese and the Spanish. So that's kind of how it worked. It was a heck of a run. Uh, we ended up kind of keeping our options open early. We went for a domination victory in the end, and it was awesome. Uh, thanks for joining me for this little analysis. It's always fun to kind of see uh, when you were behind and when you really caught up to the eye, and it helps you, you know, fine-tune your builds and figure out, you know, what's what. So thanks again for watching. Uh, it was a lot of fun doing this first playthrough with the Timurids by Tomatech. Uh, check out those mods that I've been using uh, if you haven't already. There's some really neat stuff and a bunch of other uh, sieves that Tomatech has put out are really, really high quality stuff. So uh, some surprises coming up, some interesting little things, and uh, of course, new LP will be on the way shortly. Again, thanks so much for your viewership, your subscriptions. Uh, it is awesome to have you. I'm glad to be here, and I'll be keep making this content as long as I'm able. All right. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.